Stanford University. OK, welcome to lecture six uh, of CS193P. So today, I'm going to continue the demo that we started last Thursday. We're almost done there. Uh, all we need to do is get that face view to delegate its data. Right now, its data is hardwired to something. I don't remember, zero or something. Uh, so its smiliness is part of its data. That's not just how it uh, looks. That's actually the, some of the data that it's presenting uh, is its smiliness. So we're going to delegate that. And then we're going to add a gesture recognizer, but this time we're going to have to handle it in the controller that modifies the happiness, right? That you change your model. So uh, then when we're done with that, I'm going to um, start talking about how to build an application or how to modify your existing application to have multiple MVCs, right? So far you've only had one MVC, your calculator view controller, that's it. Obviously if you want to build big apps, you need lots of MVCs and they all need to work together. And that's what we're going to talk about today. That is today's topic. Um, then I will do a demo of that and that will probably take us to the end of this lecture. But if uh, you know, it goes quickly, uh, I do have a few slides I could start showing you about the view controller life cycle, which is say a view controller comes into existence, kind of has a cycle of going on screen and off screen and other things happening. And uh, you get to find out all about that if you are a view controller. And so we'll talk about that. Uh, the section tomorrow is getting your application running on a device. Okay, so this is going to be pretty simple. iOS 5 makes it quite a bit easier to get your application running on a device. And uh, that's what we're going to do tomorrow. All right, so any questions before I start? Okay, so I'm going to go back to this demo that we had last time. Uh, let's see, back to Xcode, here we go. So I'm going back to happiness. If you remember where we were in happiness, uh, we had it drawing the face, and we could use a pinch gesture to zoom in and out. Maybe I'll, I'll run it just so you get your brain back around where we were. And uh, we also made it so that it would rotate and redraw. Uh, one thing about the rotating and redrawing this thing, uh, we modified, if you'll remember, the, um, uh, sorry, in face view, we modified the awake from nib and we overrode the designated initializer for the view in order to do this content mode redraw. I did that mostly to show you how to do that, to override init with frame and to do awake with nib. But actually, you can just set this with a little switch in Xcode. Okay, if we go over to the storyboard uh, and we select our view uh, and bring this out, you'll see, I'm sorry, that right here, mode, scale to feel, fill, we could have just set that to redraw. <laughs> okay, so we did that the hard way, but intentionally, because I wanted to show you how that other stuff worked. Um, okay, so. Uh, here we are, uh, we know that pinching works, right, we can zoom in and out, but our smile is fixed, okay, we got a fixed smiley face here and that's not good, so that's what we're going to fix today. Um, we're going to start that fix by delegating our, our face view smiliness uh, to whoever wants to set it. And I told you that we have to do this using protocols, so here I am in faceview.h and I could create a new face view data source delegate.h and put the protocol in there, but since FaceView is the only one who's going to really be interested in this, uh, we'll put it here. And so all I have to do is say protocol and give it the name. I'm going to call this the FaceView data source protocol. Okay? I could call it FaceView delegate protocol too, I suppose. Um, I kind of like to call it data source when the thing that's being delegated is the source of the data for the view. Obvious. Uh, you're going to see some views in iOS that have uh, data sources also have delegates. So they delegate some things about the way they draw, and then they also delegate their, the source of their data, as all views must do, uh, because views can't own their data. So um, I could require that uh, basically that anyone who implements this protocol be an NS object by making them implement the NS object protocol, but that's really not necessary, because I'm only going to have one method uh, in my protocol. And it is going to be, we're going to return a float. And I'm going to call it uh, smile for face view. Okay. Now, notice in my protocol here, uh, I am passing myself when I ask my delegate to get my uh, smiliness. All right. So this method just asks the delegate, what is the smile? 
but it's passing, I'm passing myself. That's something we almost always do in delegation methods is we pass ourselves along when we ask, when we're delegating something to someone else, just so they can ask us some questions if they want or whatever. You know, in this case, we're not going to need to ask back to the face view, but uh, we're always going to do that. So anytime you do a delegate or a data source, you're going to want to pass yourself along as the sender. Okay, similar to what we do in target action and, uh, and also the handlers for gestures, things like that. All right, so we have an error here, right? The error it says is it expected a type, and the little uh, caret is right here. So it doesn't see that this is a type. Why doesn't it see that face view is, a, is not a type? Anyone see why? Yeah, this is C, and this face view is declared after. So it's not declared yet. So how are we going to deal with this conundrum? Because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to down, he down here and say that my face view has a property which is non-atomic and weak, which is, uh, I'm also going to allow it to be set as an IV outlet. It's optional, but I'm going to. Which is an ID, face view data source, data source. So I'm going to have a property on my face view, which is my delegate, my, my data source delegate. So now I'm really in trouble because I can't move this up higher, up above this, because then this won't be defined. Okay, so how do I deal with this fact that we kind of have a loop here where this symbol is referenced up here and this symbol right here, sorry, is referenced down here. Okay, how do we fix that? Well, we use what's called a forward reference. And uh, for a class, we say class. So if I say class face view, just like that, just class face view, that tells the compiler there is a class called face view, and I promise I'll define it in a second, okay? But I'm not defining it yet. So that's called a forward reference, okay? We could have done the same thing with the protocol, put the protocol at the end and said at sign protocol face view data source, semicolon. And that would have just said to the compiler it exists, and I'll just declare it later. Everyone got that? Understand why we need to do that? Because we have to declare everything in order in, in C. Um, okay, we have a warning here. That's that this is not uh, synthesized. So let's go to a face view here and synthesize it. Synthesize our data source. Okay. Now, does everyone understand why we have this data source uh, property? Okay, if someone wants to control the smiliness of our face view, they're going to set themselves as the data source on this face view. Now, they have to implement this protocol if they want to do that because we've declared this thing as an ID face view data source. So this will take any object of any class, except for it has to implement the face view data source, which only has one method and it's required, which is this thing. Okay, so this is how we're going to hook up somebody to control the smiliness of the face view without the face view knowing anything about that class. All it'll know is that it implements this one method. Everyone cool with that? All right, so now let's use our delegate. We go down to our draw rect, and you'll see in our draw rect right now, we set our smile equal to 1.0, fully smiling. And instead of doing this 1.0, you can even see a comment there, this should be delegated, it's our views data. I'm just going to say self.data source, smile for face view self. So I'm going to ask my data source, give me the smile. Now, if data source is nil, what's going to happen? I'm going to get zero. That's okay, so my smile will be zero. That's perfectly fine. What if smile comes back 27? That's no good. I only support smiles between minus one and one. So probably I want to put something here that says if smile is less than minus one, then smile equals minus one. And if smile is greater than one, then smile equals one. So I'm just doing some protection here against my data source being totally screwed up. Okay? Um, all right, so uh, that's great. Now, so this is how we fixed face view to use a delegate. Now we've got to fix our controller to set itself as the delegate. So the way we do that, we go back to our happiness view controller, and we have to say that we implement that protocol. Now, the face view is a private implementation in our controller, in our happiness view controller. So I could go to my, my header file and put this right here and say, yeah, face view data source, but it doesn't belong there, okay, because that's public API. So really where it belongs is in the private API, and you're allowed to put it right here, okay? This is my private, in, private interface, right? I'm allowed to say that I implement a protocol here. I don't have to do it in my header file. 
Everyone cool with that? Now we have an error here. What's this error right here? Incomplete implementation. Why do we have an incomplete implementation? Because we said we implemented this protocol and we don't. So we have to implement it. So let's do that. Let's do it down here. It is returns a float. It's called smile for face view, right? And when I, in the very first lecture in this class, I talked about how the controller, part of its job is to interpret the data in the model for the, the views, or vice versa if you want to think about it, to get the views to understand the data in the model. Well, here's a classic example of that. The model's happiness is zero to 100. The smiliness is minus one to one, okay? So here we are, the controller, in the middle of that mess, we got to figure out how to convert it, okay? Luckily, it's quite easy in this case, because we have such an easy model. We're just going to say self.happiness minus 50 divided by 50. Okay, now notice I put 50.0 at the end there. That's because I wanted to upgrade all these uh, operands in this uh, mathematical expression to floating point. If I don't do that, I'm probably going to get either 0 or minus 1 or 1. In other words, a round number here. The 50.0 is going to cause the numerator to get promoted to be a float, and then this is going to be a floating point operation. That way I'll get a number between minus 1 and 1 that's floating point. Okay, are you cool with that? Okay, the only other thing we need to do to make this work is we have to set the face views delegate to be the controller. Okay, there's kind of a great place to do that, which is right here. Okay, when the system sets our pointer to our face view, this is also where we uh, add our pinch recognizer, we can also just say uh, self.faceview.datasource self equals self. And the compiler doesn't complain here because it knows that self, that's us, implements that protocol, right? If we didn't implement this protocol, if I took this away, then the compiler's going to complain with this line of code, see? See how it's complaining? It's saying it wants an ID face view data source. Instead, it got a strong, you know, happiness view controller star. So I'm going to put this back and make that go away, okay? So everyone understanding how the protocol is working back and forth? So this should do it. Let's go see. We'll run this here. So we've done all the parts of this. We've gotten the face view to delegate it. We've got the controller to implement the delega me delegation method. And we've got uh, the controller to set itself as a delegate. And in fact, it is working. And you might say, well, how do I know it's working? Because the happiness view controller's model happiness starts out zero. So this is the same as zero, OK? The problem here now is I'd like to be able to change this happiness with a gesture. Right? Make this guy a little happier. He doesn't look very happy to me. Right? So I'd like to do something. So I'm going to choose a simple gesture. Basically, I'm going to use uh, the, the finger. If I swipe up, or pan up actually, it's going to get happier. And if I pan down, it's going to be sadder. Okay? Happier, sadder. So that's what we're going to use a pan gesture to do that. So it's called pan. We're not panning the head around, we're, but we are panning with our finger. I'm, there'd be a difference to do swipe. Swipe is a fast flick. Okay, so I don't want the fast flick to make it happier. I want to be able to control its happiness by moving my finger up and down. All right, so what do we need to do that? Well, uh, we obviously need to add a gesture recognizer. So let me uh, make some more space here. We have this gesture rec recognizer right here, which is the pinch one we're adding to the face view. So we need to add another gesture rec recognizer to the face view. Remember, only views have recognizers. And this is not going to be a pinch. This is going to be a pan. Okay? And the target is not going to be the face view. The face view cannot handle this gesture because it cannot see the model. And this gesture is modifying the model. Only the controller can implement this. So we type self here. The target or the handler of this gesture is going to be self. And we'll make the action be something like handle happiness gesture, let's say. Okay? Now, of course, we need to implement this method. So let's do that right here, void handle happiness gesture. And it takes a UI pan gesture recognizer, right? Because this is a pan gesture. Cool with that. And we're just going to say um, gesture state change. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the pinch. Whenever the pan moves uh, or the finger goes up at the end, we're going to be tracking uh, the position of it. 
But this is a pan gesture, so here, instead of doing that scale thing, we're going to do translation equal, oops, I'm even going to say, yes, translation equals gesture, translation in view, self.face view. So even though we're handling this in the controller, we still want the gesture to be happening in the view's coordinate system, right? It has to, there has to be some view's coordinate system here, and the face view is the obvious one to use. And then I'm just going to make my happiness go down. Okay, remember that the y-axis is up, so I kind of have to flip this around. When the pan goes up, uh, the translation will be going down. So I'm going to make it get happier by translation, and I don't want it to be really sensitive, like when I'm moving small amounts of points, uh, it to make so I'm going to divide it by two. And I, I could, over time, tweak this number. This should probably be a constant. We could work on it in a time, find out that 3.5 is the right thing or whatever. Uh, but we'll start at a two, uh, just as a, to pick a number. And then I'm also got to reset this translation, remember, because I want incremental translation. I don't want the cumulative movement of the pan uh, each time. I just want the little bit that it changed. So, uh, sorry. Set the translation to zero, point zero in face view, it's coordinate system, face view's coordinate system. The um, in view argument here for both of these is just asking what coordinate system do you want me to work in? So we want it to work in the face view's coordinate system. Okay, so that should be it. Let's go uh, run and see if that does everything that we want. So here it is, let's see. Panning up is making him happier. Panning down to Okay. So we're going to use this happiness MVC in our next demo. Okay. We're going to have a two MVC app, and one of the MVCs is going to be this happiness MVP. We're going to create a new app, actually, with its own MVC, and then we're going to add this one in. So you're going to see how to start building more complex apps. Okay. Any questions about this demo? Good. All right, let's move back to slides. Got some slides to show you about multiple MVCs. All right, so view controllers. Hopefully, you guys have a really good feel now for view controllers. Um, your controller in an MVC, okay, an MVC, this is all the way back to the first day of class. Your controller is always a subclass of UI view controller in iOS. It manages a view, that's its sub, a view and all of its sub views, right? That's its minions. And uh, it talks to them with target action, outlets talking to the particular subviews at once. And it's the liaison between that view and the model. That's what the controller does, right? Everyone understands that. So how do we grow our application to use multiple MVCs? Right? And we need some infrastructure to do that. And in iOS, there's some really great infrastructure to doing that. So this, you should recognize this picture right here at the bottom. That's the MVC thing from the first lecture. And here I've got an MVC, it's got some target action in there, delegate, a couple other things. And I'm trying to add some more features to it. That's what the little uh, bubble in the lower uh, right hand corner there is. I'm trying to add something more. So for example, let's say I had a programmable calculator and I wanted to add graphing of the program. Woo, that would be a nice feature, and, uh, which is exactly what you have to do in your homework. And, but I can't fit it. There's no way, there's no room left on that little iPhone screen for a graph. You know, it'd be a tiny little graph in the corner. So obviously I need to uh, have the graph take over the screen, and then when the graph is done, go back. So what do we do here? Um, anytime we're going to add more stuff, uh, and go, it's going to be on another screen, we need a new MVC. This is an important thing to understand. Uh, you cannot have a single MVC that is supporting a uh, view that's on multiple screens. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The MVC controls one screen full or less at a time. Okay? You wouldn't have an MVC that's controlling multiple pages of, of data. Okay? Uh, we divide that up into separate uh, MVCs. So we create a new MVC. Uh, it might be quite a complicated MVC. It might even be more complicated than the original one, depending on what we're showing. You know, your graph views MVC, eh, you know, it's not, they're not very complex, medium complexity. Um, but uh, it's its own MVC, and it should stand alone as its own MVC as well. So we got these two MVCs. How do we switch the screen to show the new MVC when we hit a graph button, let's say, in our calculator? Okay, we need the screen to go to the new MVC, but we still want to be able to get back to our old MVC. How do we manage that? 
Um, the answer is we want to use a controller of controllers. And there are a number of controller of controllers, controllers of controllers, uh, in iOS. And the one we're going to talk about first, because it's kind of the simplest for you to imagine and see what's going on, is a navigation controller. All right? So a navigation controller is a controller. It's a UI view controller, a subclass of UI view controller. Okay? Now, it has no model because it is purely a user interface controller. Okay? It has a view, but it has no model, okay? because it's only controlling user interface. And this is what its views look like. You see its view looks like. You see this um, white area with uh, the little title bar at the top. That little word says title. I don't know if you can see it from there. But that's what its view looks like. Okay? That view looks like. That's what a navigation controller's view looks like, that square. But it's a special kind of controller because it's got an outlet called its root view controller, which points to another MVC. Okay, controls points to the controller, in specific, of another MVC. So you can see this guy points to that as its root view controller. Okay, the root view controller is going to be control what view appears in the white area of the navigation controller when it comes up. Okay? So the view of our first MVC is now actually embedded inside the view of the navigation controller in the white area. Okay? The navigation controller is still controlling the little title bar at the top. That belongs to it. That's part of its view. But it's taking the view from this MVC, the root view controller, and putting it into the little rectangle. And it will change the bounds of that view to fit in that white rectangle, which is a little bit smaller than that MVC might be used to. It might be used to being on the whole screen. Okay, so this is where you want to get your springs and struts right. Okay, because when that bounds gets shrunk down, you want to make sure things are moving where you want. Things are sticking to the edge you want and stretching or, or not. Everyone understand why springs and struts are important here? And navigation controller is only one of many controllers of controllers, and they, they all might squish you a little bit into a different direction. So we want to design our springs and struts so we can be different sizes. All right, so we've got this uh, MVC. Now, there might be some element, some UI element, like a button, inside the view of our first MVC, like, oh, let's say a graph button in the calculator, that when you press it, wants this other MVC to take over this little white rectangular area. Okay? So the way we do that is you perform what's called a segue. Okay, so this is an important word to understand from today, segue. And we segue, we, tell the, we execute a segue, and what it does is pushes, we call, use the word pushes, pushes the new MVC's view onto the screen. The other one slides off the screen. So it's still there. The MVC on the left is still there. Its view still exists. It's just not on screen right now. This other MVC's view, like your graph of your calculator, is on there. And if you notice in the corner, you see there's that little button right there? That's essentially a back button, okay? And the navigation controller, the controller of controllers, it put it there. And if you click that back button, then this whole thing is going to undo and go back to the way it was before, okay? Now, the difference here is this MVC on the right is probably going to go out of the heap, okay? The MVC on the left stayed in because that back, point, back button kind of had a strong pointer to it, if you want to think of it that way. But in this case, it doesn't. So it's probably going to go away, which is what you want. Remember, you're on a phone here. It's not a gigantic computer with unlimited memory and things like that. So you want to manage your memory well. So you don't want to keep that graph, for example. You don't want to keep it around if you could just recreate it if they press the graph button again. We'll just recreate the MVC. Everybody understand that? OK. Now, segues. So let's talk about how to get the segue set up first. So the segue is the thing that made it so that we, it moved over to the other MVC. And we're going to talk about how to get that set up first. Then we'll talk about how we decide we want to be in a navigation controller. So there's two parts of this. Setting up the segue, just basically making it so that the graph button causes this thing to happen. And then there's putting it into the navigation controller. All right, so to create a segue, very, very straightforward. As you might imagine, it's control drag, like a lot of things are in Xcode. You just hold down the control key, and you're going to drag from the button that you want to initiate the segue, like a graph button or whatever, to the other controller that you want to get instantiated and put on screen. So now in Xcode, these view controllers, 
they're really not, they don't exist until they get segued to. Okay? Now, so far you've only had one view controller, it's been your calculator view controller. It gets segued to essentially right off the bat. I think I showed in one of the other demos that there's a little switch in there, and I'll show it to you again today, that says this is the initial view controller of my app. So it kind of automatically gets segued to, so it gets created, instantiated, and put on screen. Now, the reason it's important to understand this is that segues always instantiate a view controller. You never segue to an existing view controller, one that's already sitting in the heap. Okay, segues create a new view controller, always. And they do this because that's the model we want for memory management. We want MVCs to get created when they go on screen, and then when they go off screen, unless there's a back button that might go to them, they go away. And then if you were to press the graph button again, they get recreated. So view controllers are somewhat ephemeral, all right? They come into existence, they're used on screen, and when they go off screen, a lot of times they'll just go away. And that keeps the memory usage of our app low. Okay, so we do this control drag, and when we do that, a little thing is going to appear in the middle. I don't know if you saw the animation there, a little thing, uh, that little line with the round circle appeared in the middle. Okay, that is a segue, and we can actually click on that segue with the mouse. Okay, and when we click on it, our inspector on the right, instead of showing, you know, the inspector of a view controller or a view or a button, it's going to actually be inspecting that segue. Now, a segue only has two pieces of information to inspect here. Segways are pretty simple. They only have a few properties, which we'll talk about today. Um, but two important properties are the identifier, that gives a name to this segue. And the reason we want the name, two reasons. One, in our code, we can say, go do this segue by name. Specify the name of the segue, it'll go do it. So that's a good thing. And also, when segues happen, we get to get involved, maybe preparing this newly created view controller to be on screen, and we identify what to do to prepare it by the name of the segue. So it's important to know the name of the segue. And then the other thing uh, is the style. Okay, and there's different styles of segues. This is going to be a push style segue. Push means it's in a navigation controller. Okay, again, there are other kinds of controllers and controllers. We're only going to talk about navigation controller today, so push is the kind we want. We're going to talk about some of the other ones uh, mostly on Tuesday. Okay, now there's a problem here though. If we just did this in our storyboard, this would not work. And it wouldn't work because we haven't put these things inside the navigation controller yet. We've defined the segue between them, that's great, but we haven't put them inside the navigation controller, so that's what I'm going to show next. So here I've kind of zoomed out. If you double click on the background of your storyboard, it'll zoom out to show you more, which you really need when you start building your whole app, multiple MVCs all segueing to each other. You want to be able to see the whole thing. And so you can zoom out, right? You can also zoom out with these little uh, things down in the bottom. Um, you see the arrow that's going into that view controller? That is the arrow that says this is where the application starts. You can actually pick that arrow up with the mouse in Xcode and move it to another Control, which is kind of cool. Or you can use this little switch over here that says initial scene. Same thing, okay? That's just setting that switch. Um, yeah, I already talked about double clicking on the background. So how do we get this thing in navigation controller? Super simple. We just pick one of the controllers that we want to be in it, and we go up to the editor menu in Xcode, and we say embed in navigation controller. And that's all it takes, and this is what's going to happen when we do that. Okay? Another view controller is going to appear, a navigation controller. Notice that it's going to keep the arrow, it moves the arrow to itself, which is kind of a nice feature. Um, and then it has a little pointer right after it, which is not a segue. Okay, this little pointer in between is a special little connection in Xcode, which is the root view controller. Remember in the previous slides I showed you that navigation controllers have a pointer to a root view controller. That's the first MVC that they display. So that's what that little thing is. You can see it has a little different icon. It kind of looks like two uh, things connected. Uh, and there, but there still is the segue between our other two. Putting it in a navigation controller didn't affect this, that other segue. But the great thing now is when we run this thing, the navigation controller is going to be the thing that gets put on screen first with its view that's a little title and a wide area. And it's going to have a root view controller set to be the second view controller. It's going to put it in its little white space. And then when we click the button, show other view controller, it's going to segue to the other one and move it in. Okay, so that's what we've built here. Um, a little bit more about navigation controllers, what all the pieces are and where they come from. Um, this space that's defined in red right here, that's the view. 
okay, of the controller that is like on the top of the stack of the navigation controller. It's the most recently th pushed on thing. Okay? So like the start is the root view controller. Um, this is the title. There's actually a property in your view controller called title. It's an NS string. And if you set that, the navigation controller, when something gets pushed on, it'll ask that thing that got pushed on, what's your title? And it'll set that to be the title. So this title always keeps track of what's being pushed on. All right. Similarly, down at the bottom here, there's a toolbar that uh, I didn't show in the previous uh, incarnations, but you can have a toolbar. And if you have a method in um, navigation controller, or sorry, a method in UI view controller called toolbar items, if you set the toolbar items to an NS array of UI bar button items, then the navigation controller will put this bar on the bottom whenever that thing gets pushed on. So the bottom bar also tracks what is shown in the middle. Notice that this would also make the middle thing a little shorter. Again, struts and springs. We want to make sure we have those right. And then finally, the back button up in the corner doesn't actually say back. It actually have the title of the previous controller. Okay, the thing that if we pressed it, we would get slid over to. That's one reason you don't really want to have long titles. It's probably going to get cut off anyway, um, but also you don't want your back button to be really long. Okay, so titles of view of navigation controller, titles of view controllers that appear in navigation controllers want to be short, short words, short, okay? All right, so we pushed this uh, MVC onto the stack and the back button appeared. When does it get popped off? Well, obviously pressing the back button pops it off, uh, but you can also pop it off programmatically by calling this method pop view controller animated animated yes or no, it's almost always yes. You virtually never would say no there. You want the sliding effect as this thing slides off. Um, when would you ever do this uh, programmatically? Not very often, but here's an example. Let's say uh, I had the view controllers on screen and there's a delete button and the user hits delete and it deletes the record that's being shown currently. Well, now that record's gone, so I can't dis display it anymore, so I really, I gotta go back, right? I gotta pop this view controller off. It's just not meaningful anymore. So you see how some semantic thing inside of the view controller can make it so it doesn't make sense for it to be there anymore, so it just pops. That's pretty rare to do this. Okay, usually we like to let the user control that with the back button. Now, notice this line of code at the bottom, self.navigationcontroller pop view controller. This code would be in the view controller that's on screen, the one that has the delete button. This is probably the target action method of the delete button. And uh, all UI view controllers have this property navigation controller, and if you ask the value of that property, if this UI view controller is currently in a navigation controller, whether it's the thing that's currently pushed on or not, it will return that navigation controller to you. So you can do things like pop view controller. Make sense? All right, so you can always find out if you're a navigation controller using this property. There are other properties similar to this, like self.split view controller, self. Um, uh, popover controller, there might be one for that too, that'll tell you what environment you're in, okay? Uh, other kinds of segues. So we talked about push with navigation controller. There are other kinds. There's the replace segue uh, in split view controller. There's popovers, of course, on the iPad. We'll talk about those next week. And we'll talk about modal, which is a certain way to present a view controller on screen so it kind of blocks your app until the person uh, responds to it. Uh, for example, you might be in your iTunes, or let's say you're in your address book and you say new entry, and it puts up a screen. Until you hit, hit done or cancel, that's all you can do in your app. You can't click anywhere else in your app, you can't go to any other screen because you're kind of modally, in a mode, creating a new address book entry, right? Um, modal, modal presentation can be misused, kind of, it's an easy go-to move to put something on screen that it's kind of frustrating for users when they're in a mode. So you really don't want to go to modes, and so we're not going to teach it until later in the quarter. Okay, now, we know how to fire off a segue by clicking a button, and it fires the segue, and the, the thing happens, but how about firing off a segue from code? We know these segues are named, like we had that one that had the name, uh, I don't remember what name we gave that thing, uh, but whatever name it was, in the inspector we set a name for it, and uh, so we can actually write a line of code that will cause that segue to happen. Now, why would we ever want to do that? Why would we want to have code executing the segue instead of just having the button be wired up in Xcode? And here's an example of why. You want the segue to be conditional. 
right? You've got a segue to your ski rental form, and you've got a segue to your snowboard rental form, which are different, right? Skis, you need poles and binding settings and all that stuff. Snowboard, you don't. You have the length of the board, goofy or not, that kind of stuff. So you've got these two uh, different segues, and so you just have a target action method in a view controller called uh, rent equipment. You click that button, this code executes, and depending on whether you're a skier or a snowboarder, it performs segue by name, uses the name. This ask about skis or ask about snowboard would be in the inspector of that segue in the storyboard. And so you're conditionally segueing. That makes sense why we would do that in code? In the demo, I'm going to do both in code and I'll do it directly so you can kind of see them side by side. Question? Are these like segue things compatible with iOS 4? Okay, so the question is, can I do segues in iOS 4? And the answer is, Segways are only in storyboards. Storyboards are only in iOS 5. So no, they're not compatible. Okay. So the question is, will this code run? If you built this in iOS 5 and targeted iOS 4, this code would not even compile, probably. Okay. So no, it would not run. Okay. This is all iOS 5. All the stuff we're talking about is iOS 5. The whole topic of I want to build an iOS 5 environment, but I want it to work on iOS 4, that's a whole, we might have a lecture on that. Maybe it'll be a Friday section or something later in the quarter, because that's a whole can of worms. And I'm trying to make sure that all this is presented to you in some consistent way, so we're going all iOS 5 here. Okay? We're assuming that you're building under iOS 5, deploying on an iOS 5 device. Okay? All right. So when a segue happens, either because the person clicked a button and it was wired, or the previous one with the rent equipment and someone did perform segue with identifier, what happens inside of my app? And only one thing happens before that thing goes on screen. Uh, I mean, behind the scenes, it's doing a lot of stuff. It's creating that view controller, instantiating it, because remember, segues always instantiate a new instance of a view controller. So that happens. It wires up all your outlets and actions and all that stuff. And then it calls this method in your controller, prepare for segue. Okay, this is a very, very important method, not just to understand that you need it to, to get your thing to work, but to understand how you implement it. Okay? So prepare for segue is sent to you so that this segue that's going to come on screen because of some action in yourself, whether it's going to be pushed on or it's a popover that's going to pop over you or whatever, however the segue is going to happen, you need to be able to prepare that view controller to come on screen. So Again, let's think of the calculator example. When you hit the graph button you, and you have a segue to a calculator view controller MVC, uh, it can't just throw that thing on screen. That graph controller needs to know what to graph. Okay, you have to prepare it by telling it, here's the program I want you to graph. Okay? So, uh, but, it's, but not only do you want to prepare that thing to come on screen, you want to prepare it to pretty much run on its own. Okay, you need to think of the MVC that you're segueing to, all right, as like a view. It has to obey all the same rules as a view would. Uh, so one of the main rules is it can't talk back to you, right? Views can only talk back to you in one way, two ways that we've shown you, right? Target action, which you can't use here. Okay, target action doesn't make sense because this thing has taken over the screen. The new one takes over the screen. But it can use delegation. So if you really needed that MVC to, it's doing something that it needs to communicate back, it needs to use delegation to communicate it back. Okay? You do not want to give the MVC you're pushing a direct pointer back to yourself. That would be bad. Now you can set yourself as its delegate, which is a pointer back to it, but it's a blind pointer, right? It's an ID with some protocol. That's different than just a pointer that the thing you're pushing knows your class. Okay? So this is an important thing to understand. You, some of you will make this mistake in homework number three. You'll push your calculator graph controller, and your calculator graph controller is going to have an instance variable, which is of type calculator view controller star, and that's wrong. Okay? When you're pushing, when you're segueing, the thing that you're segueing to is like when you, your views, and it needs to obey the same thing. If we looked back, I should have put a picture up from lecture two. Remember there were some uh, MVCs where it pointed off into the view and it was pointing to another MVC. That's basically what's going on here. Okay? When we segue, it's like we're using the other MVC as part of our view, which we are, right? The calculator MVC is using the graphing one to show some more UI. It's just that it has to put it on another screen and all that stuff because it's big and et cetera, et cetera. This is where we manage that interface. This is where we push. 
things onto the screen. And this is where we have to be careful to obey the view rules. Is everyone okay with that? Understand what I'm saying there? I put it up in words. You can look at it again later. But that's the main point of this slide. The implementation of prepare for segue is quite easy. You're usually going to look at the identifier of the segue because you might have multiple buttons, a graph button and then some other button that does a segue too to do something else, not graphing, but something else. So prepare for segue gets called for all of them. So you're going to look at the identifier to see which segue we're talking about, and then you're going to do the right thing. You know, do whatever is necessary to prepare that thing. So like the graph, you're going to set the program. Um, Maybe in the skiing example, in the prepare for segue, you're going to set the person's height and weight because it sets the bindings or things like that. You're going to pass that all and then let this MVC go do its job. And the only time this MVC is going to talk back to you might be through delegation. But a lot of times it's not going to talk to you at all. Okay? Its model might be some database that it's just storing something into. Okay? All right. So instantiating a view controller by name from a storyboard. So, so far we've only talked about uh, instantiating view controllers by segueing to them. But it is actually possible to create a view controller and put it on screen yourself. And the way you do that is you give the view controller a name. Remember we gave segues a name. You can also give an identifier to your view controller. You see down there it says view controller. One of the, one of the properties is identifier. It's filled out to be hello there right there. So this view controller is called uh, hello there. Now, this view controller, this inspector shows us up if I click on the view controller. And I could actually have multiple arrangements of a user interface for a given view controller. So this is defining that particular arrangement. So to the calculator example, maybe I have simple calculator, which doesn't have any of the variables or anything like that. And then I have complex calculator, which is they're both calculator view controllers, but they have different target action, different buttons in there, fewer buttons in one than the other. That's all perfectly allowed. And they would each have a different name. One would probably be called simple calculator, and the other would be called complex calcula calculator. So anyway, uh, you can then create the controller by using this method in storyboard called instantiate view controller with identifier. You just specify the identifier, and it will create and wire up all the outlets and buttons for that controller. Uh, you usually get the storyboard to send this message to by calling self.storyboard in a view UI, UI view controller. But self.storyboard in view UI view controller only works if that view controller came from a storyboard. Okay? In other words, self.storyboard is the storyboard that this view controller came from. So you cannot use this mechanism to instantiate view controllers in other storyboards unless you create that other storyboard, which is possible. You can create a storyboard. In this class, we're only going to have two storyboards, our iPad storyboard and our iPhone storyboard. That's it. But it is possible to actually have other storyboards, to have little sub-scenes, maybe, of your UI. Um, we're not going to do that in this class, but you can do it. All right. um, so what would the code look like here? Uh, so here I have a target action method, do it. So I got some button, and I hit do it. Uh, when I hit do it, uh, I've got some do it view controller in my storyboard. I've named it, uh, what do I call it, do it, do it one uh, in the identifier. So I just create it by saying self.storyboard instantiate view controller, do it one. Then I give do it the info it needs, just like I would in prepare, prepare for segue, but I'm not segueing here, so I have to do it myself right now. Okay? So I'm not segueing, I'm instantiating the view controller and putting it on screen myself. And here I'm using the method in navigation controller called push view controller, which is what segue uses when it does a push segue. Okay? I don't think you're going to need to do this in this class, but uh, you know, this is an important method to understand that it exists, that you could instantiate a view controller without using Segway. Okay? But normally Segway is how we do that. All right. So time for this demo. What is this demo going to be? All right. This demo is called Psychologist. And uh, this is going to be a very simple psychologist. It's just going to ask a question and offer you a few answers. And when you pick an answer, it's going to diagnose you and show your happiness using the happiness view controller. OK? Very, very simple. The demos have to be simple. Um, what you should watch for in this demo, obviously, we're going to reuse the happiest, happiness MVC in a new app. I'm going to start a new app from scratch, and I'm going to be dragging in my code. Uh, for the happiness MVC and the face view. I'm going to drag that in. Um, you also want to look at, uh, w watch for my creation of the segue. I'm going to do both the segue where I go directly from a button and I'm going to do the segue where uh, it's named. 
where I'm going to perform the segue and, and have it by name. And uh, also, you're going to watch what we're going to do this inside a navigation controller. All right. All right. Let's do that. Let's go to Xcode. All right. So I'm back in Xcode here. I'm just going to create a new project. Um, I'm going to do a single view application, even though I'm going to add more MVCs later. We're going to start out with a single view application, same as you've always done. Uh, I'm going to call it psychologist. I have trouble typing this word, so I apologize in advance. Psychologist. Must be some psychological thing on my part. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so in, we're going to use storyboards, reference counting, all that stuff is the same. All right, we're going to uh, put it in our home directory developer where we're hopefully putting all of our projects. No source control on this one. Um, all right, so here we go. We got a uh, fresh uh, project here. Here's our storyboard. It's got a blank controller. This is, should harken back to the first time we did the walkthrough and created an app. This is the first time we're creating a brand new app. Okay, and notice here's the arrow that says this is the controller that's going to appear, the initial view controller. All right, so um, let's just start building our UI here uh, from the start, and then, then we'll start segueing out of it. So uh, this is going to be a psychologist, so let's have a label here where it asks its question. Um, how about, we'll have this psychologist be, uh, we'll, go, we'll go right to the top and have Sigmund Freud, okay? So he's probably going to ask a question something like, uh, what do you see in your dreams, or something along those lines. Um, so we'll have that, and then we'll have some answers. So maybe I see, let's see here, let's make some nice wide buttons. What do I see in my dreams? Maybe uh, I'm flying all the time, okay? Or what else might we see in our dreams? Maybe, um, maybe I always see a steel apple with a bite taken out. Or maybe I see, or maybe, um, maybe uh, I'm chased by dragons. Okay, so these are the answers uh, that I'm going to give, and based on these answers, th that should be enough answers to fully diagnose you. Although Freud probably would say eh, it'll take another ten months, every five times a week, or whatever the ridiculous uh, Freudian uh, thing was. Um, quite an investment. Uh, so what we need to do here is uh, to um, segue from these things to a happiness controller that's going to show our diagnosis. So the first way we're going to do this, though, is I'm going to uh, perform the segues in code. So instead of directly control dragging from here to a uh, happiness view controller, instead I'm going to use target action, which is what you're used to. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, close this. Open up this, we get rid of this, go here, make it so we can see it at the same time. All right, so here is our psychologist view controller. Um, the life cycle I'm going to talk about on Tuesday, this will be the last time, I'm just going to delete all this stuff. Uh, I'm going to leave the auto rotation in there because I told you about that, but I'm going to allow auto rotation to every uh, orientation. All right. Okay, so. Um, how am I going to do this? Uh, I'm just going to have some target action message here. Let's go ahead and do the cart target action. So there's this one. This one, we don't need any sender. I'm just going to call this one flying. And then we want this one. Uh, again, we don't need the sender. Let's call this apple. And then this one. Oops, this one. Let's say no sender. Dragons. All right, we have our three target actions. How am I going to implement this? Well, I'm going to add kind of what you would call a model uh, to my psychologist view controller. Psychologist view controller. Okay, um, I'm going to make it be a, an int diagnosis. Okay, and that int, I'm going to have it have the same semantics as the int in happiness view controller. Could be different. We might have to do translation, but eh, we're going to make it the same. So we got a warning, that's because we got to synthesize. Diagnosis equals underbar diagnosis. Um, so what am I going to do here? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my diagnosis, then I'm going to segue. All right? So since they're all going to do that, I'm going to say self 
set and show diagnosis. And we'll specify. So flying, if I'm flying, Freud would probably say I'm pretty happy. So let's go 85. Um, then self, oops, so I, actually here I'm going to, let's define this first, make it easy on myself. So set and show diagnosis takes an int, which is the diagnosis to use. I'm just going to say self.diagnose, no, don't want that. Diagnosis equals diagnosis, so we'll set that. Uh, and then we're going to have to segue, so we'll leave that for now. Uh, okay, so self, set, and show diagnosis. Uh, if you're dreaming of steel apples with bites, you are happy. So we'll go 100 there. And then if your dragons are, tracing, are chasing you in your um, dreams, I'm thinking not too happy. Okay, so we'll go 20 on that one. Um, oops, got my oh, yes there. Okay, so, uh, so this segue, how are we going to do this? Well, to perform the segue, we have to have a segue in the storyboard to perform. So let's go take a little time out and go do that. All right. So to do that, we're going to need to get our code from Happiness View Controller. So to do that, I'm going to bring back the uh, project navigator so you can see where we drag that in. Let's move this out of the way. Go to Home Directory Developer. Here's Happiness. I'm going into my Happiness project. And I'm going to drag in my face view and my controller. Okay, I don't need any of the other stuff, just these, those two classes. So I drag it in. Now, when I drag and drop this in, it's very important to pay attention here to this switch right here, copy items into destination group folder. Okay, almost certain that you want to do that. Now, if you don't, then any code that you're going to be sharing like this between projects, you're going to want to have that like under source management and in a well-known directory. You don't want to just start pointing to your other projects willy-nilly, okay? You want to usually copy this stuff in, okay, uh, in this class. So, because it's just simpler, you're going to get in less trouble. Because if you don't copy it in and then you delete the other project or rename it or something, then you might end up with a pointer to uh, no, nothing. Files are gone. So we're going to copy them in. So here we go, here's happiness, you can do this is what we just worked on, okay, same thing we just worked on. Um, and now since we have that, we can um, drag one out into our storyboard. And the way we do that, okay, so this is the first time you're ever seeing creating a second MVC in a storyboard. The way we do it is by taking a view controller from the object palette down here, just like we did a button or whatever, and just dragging it out, okay. And just like we did with the view, we got to set this thing's class to be a happiness view controller, right? If I go to the identity inspector and I look at its class, it's just a generic UI view controller. But if I go down to the list here, I can change it to be a happiness view controller. Now the other thing I have to do, since I just created from the scratch, is create its view again. And this sometimes confuses people. It's like, what? I thought you in the view? Hmm? So the reason for this is every time in a storyboard that you're creating a controller, you need to lay out its view. Now you might copy and paste this, and we could go get that other story and copy and paste, but if we do copy and paste, remember, no outlets and actions will be preserved. Here I'm just going to build it again. So I'm dragging out a generic UI view, I'm going up here and changing it to be a face view, and then I'm just going to connect the outlet here from my controller to my face view. Now I'm back exactly where I was. Okay. So you can see that when you're building new um, storyboard view controllers, it's not so hard to be rebuilding the stuff. You, you, you know what you want, all your outlets are ready, you can just, boom, you're there. Um, so I told you that these buttons send target action. So I'm not going to control drag like this to create a segue. Okay? We'll do that in a second, but I'm not doing that here. Okay? Instead, uh, these things have target action. Okay? And so they're sending a target. But I still need to create the segue that I'm going to call from those target actions. So how do I do that? To do that, you drag from the controller, okay, this is the controller down here, to the new controller. Okay, so I'm just dragging from the controller, not from the buttons individually, but from the controller. Now when I let go, it says, what kind of segue do you want from this controller to the other one? I'm going to say push. And now, very importantly, okay, I need to select this segue and give it a name, because if I don't, I won't be able to execute it from code. I can only execute it by name. So I'm going to call this show diagnosis. This name should very clearly state what this segue does. Okay? And clearly this segue shows the diagnosis. And its style push is right. Okay? 
So now let's go back to our code, get rid of this, bring up this, go here. And now we can do this line of code right here, which is this segue. And it's actually super simple. We're just going to say self perform segue with identifier show diagnosis. Okay, and now sender is an interesting argument. Sender would usually be like the button that is causing this segue. But in this case, it's the view controller itself that is causing this segue to happen. All right, so we're almost there. We're not quite there. Anyone know what we're missing? Sorry? Navigation we're missing the navigation controller. That's good. And we're actually missing one other thing too, which is prepare for segue. Okay? Right? So we got this segue. It segues to this happiness view controller, but we got to prepare that happiness view controller by telling it its happiness. All right? So we need to implement the method prepare for segue. Okay? And in this case, very easy to implement. We're just going to say if the segue identifier is show diagnosis, then we just want to say segue.destinationViewController. Segue so I haven't really talked about um, this class UI Storyboard Segway. This is a good time to talk about it. It doesn't really have a lot of properties. One property is identifier. Another property is destination view controller. That's the view controller it created as part of the segue. By the time prepare for segue is called, it has created it. And it's got it in this property, destination view controller. This property is of type ID. Okay, let that sink in. This is of type ID. So, for example, I can call set happiness. Okay. Now, the compiler's not going to like this. Why is it not going to like this? Not because I can't send set happiness to an ID, but because set happiness is declared nowhere in this file. So it, it's one of those situations where it's like, there's no such method as set happiness, so you probably mistyped that. So that's why it's giving me an error right here. But it's not an error. All I need to do here is import the happiness view controller dot h. Okay? Now set happiness, which is a public property on this, is defined. Now you might say here, well, ID, that's dangerous right there. What if that ID doesn't respond to set happiness? Okay? This is going to raise an exception and crash your program. But you've got to ask yourself your que a question here. If this is, in fact, a show diagnosis segue, and the destination view controller does not respond to set happiness, should you try and keep running? Your, your program is just broken. Okay? So you want it to crash here. You want it to raise an exception because it's wrong. It's not hooked up properly. Okay? So sometimes it's okay to just not even check, do what you expect to be right, and if it's not, have it crash, and you can go debug it. Okay? So uh, anyway, so set happiness, so that's it. Um, back to what this person said, absolutely correct. We haven't put this stuff in a navigation controller. So if we go back to here and look, uh, this would not work. We got the segue. It's prepared. Uh, it's, it, the segue is called from the tar target action thing. But since this is not in a navigation controller, nothing will happen. If you do a push segue when you're not in a navigation controller, not, nothing happens. But luckily, putting this in a navigation controller couldn't be easier. We just go up here, embed in navigation controller, bam. Okay? Now, notice that it put these little title bars on here. This is kind of cool. Xcode puts these here so that you can just uh, double click and set the titles of your controllers right here. Okay? So this is probably mm, Dr. Freud. And then this one over here. Uh, we'll call diagnosis. Okay. All right. Let's try it. So uh, notice that we don't put any title on the navigation controller itself because it's pulling its title from these things. So there's Dr. Freud. What do you see in your dreams? Uh, a steel apple with a bite taken out. Ooh, we like that. Chased by dragons, not so much. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, now I'm going to show you a similar thing, but instead we're going to directly segue. Instead of using target action and then setting our self-diagnosis and then segueing in code, I'm going to directly segue from buttons. And instead of changing this to do that, I'm going to add a new doctor. Okay, We have Dr. Freud. I'm going to add a new one. 
Um, and we'll have both Freud and the other doctor in our UI at the same time. We can switch back and forth between these two guys. Um, so how do I add a new doctor, okay, a new psychologist? Well, a new psychologist is just a new psychologist view controller that's going to have a little different UI. So I just drag this out, okay, we'll put it here, and uh, let's make ourselves a lot more room. And uh, so I just drag this out as generic. So I need to go to the identity inspector and change it to be a psychologist view controller. Okay. Uh, also, I want the navigation controller. We'll start by having the nav navigation controller switch to this one. So let's just do that. I'm dragging to reset this. You see this little root view controller? The way you reset it is control, just like any other thing, control drag. And when I do, it could be a segue, but actually what I want is this relationship root view controller. So I click that. Now this becomes it. Notice these guys have gotten cut off. There's no wire that points to them anymore. And that's what's one thing that's great about storyboards is you can see these view controllers aren't accessible. There's no way to segue to them. I can still have them in my storyboard, but I can't get to them. We'll wire them back into the game later. But, uh, but the good thing about storyboards is you get to see the whole world all at once. So this doctor, let's go ahead and put a title here for this doctor. I'm going to call this doctor uh, Dr. Pill. Okay, and Dr. Pill is a TV psychologist. So let's have Dr. Pill <laughs> ask a little different question than Dr. Freud. He's going to say what he probably always says on a show is, is, so what brings you to my show, oops, to my show or iPhone app today? Okay, we didn't talk about this in uh, uh, other things, but when labels get really long like that, uh, a cool thing you can do with the label, one of its attributes is how many lines of text you allow. So I'm going to change it to be allow two lines, uh, and then I can resize it. Notice that the resize works outside. Of course, when you let go of it, you're back inside. Um, so we could probably make this a little smaller or whatever. Okay? Use our blue lines. So what brings you uh, to my show or iPhone app today? So we'll have a little different answers here. Uh, let's see, what are some of the uh, answers we might hear in Dr. Pill? Uh, well, maybe uh, I'm a celebrity. Okay, that brings you on Dr. Pill. Uh, or maybe something like uh, I have a serious problem. Or perhaps uh, I want to be on TV. Okay, so these are some of the answers you, we're going to give this doctor and we'll see what he says. Now, we're still going to have happiness view controller show the diagnosis, but we're just going to directly transition uh, to the diagnosis. So how are we going to do that? Um, I'm going to use copy and paste, actually, to get more happiness view controllers. You see I have them down here. All right, so I'm just going to do copy and paste. Sorry, we opened the, it opens the thing on the right when you add new, uh, uh, new view controllers, which is kind of nice. But I need more, so I'm going to copy and paste again and again. Uh, one thing when you paste a view controller, you have to not have a view controller selected. Otherwise, it'd be trying to paste it inside the view controller, and you can't have a view controller directly in a view controller like that. Um, so you have to click on the background to deselect and then hit paste. Uh, you actually won't even need to do that for your uh, app, but that's okay. So we're going to hide this thing again. Let's go ahead and hide that now so we can make more room. So here we've got our three uh, controllers, and we're just going to use the control key and directly segue to them. Okay. Still push sideways because we're still in a navigation controller. Okay, so we have the three. Now, how are we going to do the prepare this time? Okay, question? Why do you need two separate ones instead of one? Um, because each button has its own segue. It creates its own segue, and we're going to show why this is, might be a valuable way to do this as opposed to having one in just a minute. So that's a great question. Um, so we need to inspect these segues, though, first. Uh, and give them names. So we'll call this one the celebrity segue. We'll call this one the uh, serious segue. And we'll call this one the uh, TV kook segue. All right, so we got the segues named. How do we prepare? All right, very simple. We go back to our code. And in our prepare for segue, we're just going to check to see if the identifier is one of these new ones, like celebrity, then we're going to segue destination set happiness 
to whatever. Now, a celebrity comes on Dr. Phil, usually Dr. Phil is very happy, and usually celebrity is probably in very good mental health. So we'll give them 100%. Uh, but some of these other things, uh, like, let's see, if you have a serious problem on Dr. Phil, mm, that's going to be sad times. Dr. Phil doesn't like that. And uh, if you're a TV kook, well, it depends. Some of the TV kooks are great, some not so great. So we'll make that 50 so we can see what it is. Okay, so here we've segued it. We haven't even created our model self-diagnosis. We've just segued, segued straight to the diagnosis. Not that that ever happens in Dr. Pill. But uh, that's what we're doing. So now if we run, okay, now we've got Dr. Pill, right? Instead of Dr. Freud, we have Dr. Pill because we changed where that thing pointed. And if we click I'm a celebrity, woo, we're happy. And if we have a serious problem, mm, we're not so happy. And if we're on TV, okay. Okay, so that's good. Now, the question here was, why would I want to do it this way? Okay, why would I want to have three separate uh, controllers here? And here's why. If you have a serious problem, for example, uh, Dr. Pill, a lot of times, will say something he doesn't say to a, um, uh, to a celebrity, okay, which is to move this out of the way a little bit. I'm going to make this a little smaller to make some room. Sorry, put it over there. Um, I'm going to grab another button. I'll put it right in here. Oops, didn't want to do that. Sorry. Uh, more space over here. Uh, I'm going to put this button in here, and I'm going to say, go to Dr. Pill's website. Okay, that's a lot of times what Dr. Pill says. Okay, but he only says that to people who have serious problems. He doesn't say that to the celebrities. So you can see in my storyboard now that I'm actually doing different things. These are all happiness view controllers. They're all going to show the happiness, but do you see how one is showing something different? So now when I run this, we're going to see that if I'm a celebrity, oh, get my smiley face. If I want to be on TV, oh, I'm a kook. Uh, if I have a serious problem, oh, I get the smiley face, but I also get this go to Dr. Pill's website. Okay? So this is where you might want to have multiple ones. So you can have different UIs. Okay? Same controller, different UIs. That's perfectly um, allowed. Now you'd want to wire this up as target action to the thing. That button wouldn't be in the other ones. That's fine. That target action would never get called from there. Um, okay, the last thing I'm going to do real quick is make it so both doctors can be on screen at the same time. Okay, sorry, I'm running a little long here. And to do that, uh, I'm going to bring out another view controller. Okay, so let's grab another view controller. This is a generic one, and I'm going to leave it generic. And the reason it's generic is it's going to put on either Dr. Pill or Dr. Freud, uh, depending on which button is pressed, and it doesn't need to do any preparation or anything else like that. It can directly... Um, segue, and so here I'm just going to put a button in here for each of these two doctors. So we'll have one for Dr. Pill, and we're going to have one for Dr. Freud. Line up our buttons here. Um, and they're just going to directly, I'm going to control drag the segue here, right? Push. I'm going to control drag uh, well, sorry, missed my Freud. There we go. Control down here. Push. Uh, obviously, I don't want my root view controller pointing to the Dr. Pill up here. I want my root view controller pointing to this one. Okay. Notice that it's you know showing me all the titles. By the way, I could have gone and changed these diagnosis titles. Maybe you know this one would be. Um, um, or, uh, I'm not sure what Dr. Pill says when someone has a serious problem. Uh, but anyway, now when we run, okay, we're, our initial uh, view controller is this generic view controller. And if we press Dr. Pill, it's going to go there and up to I, I'm a celebrity or I have a serious problem. And notice the back button here goes to Dr. Phil and this back button goes back here. By the way, this back button says back, okay, because there's no title for this. So if, again, if we went over here, usually in our very first one, we might likely put the name of our app. Okay, so like psychologist. Okay, question? Is there a way to set the title bar? Like the first one, if you didn't even want psychologist there? 
Um, yeah, so the question is, could I make it so that there's no psychologist here? And uh, the answer there is really, you don't want to do that. Okay, the t this title bar kind of is a grounding position for the whole navigation that we're going through here, and you wouldn't want it to disappear. You see, when I go here and I press this to go back, th that's going to disappear and then come back down. It'd it just be somewhat disconcerting. So the answer is no. For the purposes of this class, um, the title bar is always on the top for all the controllers in the navigation controller. Any other questions about this? Yeah. Okay, so the question is, can I have a circular relationship uh, between the views, which would basically mean if I'm looking at my storyboard, by the way, you can really see the advantages of storyboards here, uh, when you can look at your whole application and see where things are going, right? Um, but the question is, could I have one of these guys go point back over to here? That's your question, right? And the answer is, yes, you can, but not for the reason you think. The reason you can go back around is because every time you segue, you create a new instance, right? So you would not be going back around to this one. You'd be going back to a new one that looks just like this, but it would be a new instance, right? Now, that would be probably quite confusing for the end user, so I would recommend against it. Uh, but it's important to understand all these segues are creating new instances. And then when I hit back, they go away. There's no strong pointers left to them in the heap. They just get deallocated. And if I press forward again, then they get reallocated, okay? New, newly created, freed up. Newly created, freed up. All right, thanks everybody. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.